And let's try and make this like somewhat quick because I'd rather give you more time to practice than make you listen to me for a super long time. So we're gonna review a couple of things. First thing we're gonna look at is this GCF factory. So this is like the opposite of multiplying a monomial by a polynomial. How many terms does a monomial have? Yeah, one, one term. How many terms does a polynomial have? Not necessarily three or two. Yeah, just more than one, more than one term. And the way we do GCF factoring is we find what's common amongst all the terms and we like, we take it out. We take it out. So I'm gonna go over two examples. The first one I'm gonna go over is just, is multiplying the monomial times the polynomial, okay? So what do we do when I have a problem like this? When I have a monomial times a polynomial, what do I do? Sometimes you guys use, yeah, exactly. Exactly, the little movement, right? So we're using the distributive property, right? Distributive property, where I take this 5n and I multiply it by each term inside the parentheses. So I get 5n times 2n squared. What is 5n times 2n squared? Perfect, yeah, nice job. Whoops, not m, n. 10n cubed. What's 5n times 2n? 10n squared. And what do I put in between these two terms? Not addition. Subtraction. Subtraction, because that subtraction sign sticks. Okay, and then 5n times 8. I heard someone 40n. And what do I put here? Plus. Good. Okay, so this is taking a monomial, timesing it, multiplying it by a polynomial, and I end up with just a polynomial, right? Now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to factor out the GCF. So this time I'm going to go from a polynomial, and I'm going to go into, I'm going to have a monomial out in front and then parentheses with the polynomial inside, okay? So let's take a look at this. First, we're gonna do, we're gonna figure out what is common amongst all three of those terms. We'll do that with prime factorization. Prime factorization, let's write that down. Prime factorization. Okay, so, we need to break down these numbers into smaller pieces so we can see what's common amongst them. So 24, what two numbers multiplied together give me 24? Two times 12, yeah. And what about two? Can I break down two any further? No. Can I break down 12 any further? To what? Six times two. I can't break down two. Can I break down six? To what? Three times two. So now 24 becomes two times two times two times three. Let's write that up there. Two times two times two times three. And then what about the k squared? How do I write that in? expanded form, k times k, okay? Now 48, what two numbers multiplied together give me 48? 24 times two. Can I erase this, you guys? Can I erase this piece? Thank you. So I have a little bit more space. What did you say, two times 24? Ooh, I don't want to use gray. I'm going to use purple. 2 times 24. We already, we already established 2 can't be broken down any further, but what about, well, and then 24 we just figured out, right? 24 we just did. 
So what I can do is 48 just becomes 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, right? So let's do that in a different color so we can differentiate. So 2 times, I thought I picked a different color. Green. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times k. And then what about 8? What about 8? What is the, huh? Yeah, 4 times 2. And then what about the 4? 2 times 2. Yeah, so 8 is just 2 times 2 times 2. And let's do that in orange. 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. And we're, this is my 24k squared plus 48k minus 8. Right. Now we need to decide what is common amongst all three of those terms. What is three twos? Exactly. Three twos. So three twos from there, three twos from here, and three twos from there. I think my algebra teacher told me, so when you find out what's common amongst all those terms, it's like they just became best friends, they realize they're exactly the same, and they go and run away out in front. So the two times two times two leaves the rest of the polynomial behind and goes out in front. So we've got 2 times 2 times 2. And what does that simplify to? 8, just 8. So that equals 8. So this is my, this is the GCF. And like I said, that 8 kind of hangs out, out, out in front, just like this 5N was here. Right? And then I open the parentheses. And if I take, if this 8 left, that term, if I took out all three of those twos, what's left? 3k squared. And that makes sense because 8 times 3k squared would give me 24k squared. Right? Now, the same thing for this one. From 48k, if I took out three twos, if I took out 8, what would I be left with? 2 times 3 times k, which simplifies to just 6k. So plus 6k. And again, if I, so I multiplied that, if I multiplied 8 times 6k, I'd end up with 48k, which is what I want to get back, right? Okay, and now the last piece, if I took 8 out of 8, what would I be left with? Not zero, one, one. What we're doing here is I'm dividing. I'm taking this eight and I'm dividing by eight. So I end up with one and that's a minus one. And again, that makes sense because if I took this eight and I multiplied it, I'd end up with minus eight. You see how if I put a zero here, what would I end up with when I multiplied it back out? I'd end up with zero, but that's not what I want. I need that eight, okay? So that's why it's one, All right? So now let's look at, um, now we're looking at factoring quadratics specifically. So quadratics are something with a squared variable. And this is our standard form of a quadratic. It's that ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all numbers. So is this an example of a quadratic, our answer from this one? No. Why not? Well, yeah, there's three parts, but, but I could just have like a plus zero there. Why is it why is it not a quadratic? Hmm? 
Yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, because the highest degree is this cubed. The highest exponent, the biggest exponent is three. For a quadratic, the biggest exponent is only gonna be two. You can only have squared, right? So was this a quadratic? No, you can't really read it anymore, but is that a quadratic? Yeah, yeah. And when we factor quadratics, it's like the opposite of multiplying a binomial times a binomial, or the opposite of doing the FOIL method. So let's talk about when A equals 1. So this is like numbers 1 through 4 on that practice page. So when A equals 1, when the, le the way we say it is the leading coefficient is one the leading coefficient so when a equals one what we need to do is we need to first identify what a b and c are and then we figure out the factors of c and then we take those different factor pairs and we figure out how they could be added or subtracted together to get to b to get to this middle coefficient and you can add in negative signs wherever you need them. So let's do kind of the same thing as we did up here. We're going to do down here. I'm first going to multiply a binomial times a binomial because this is the opposite of factoring a quadratic. Okay, so when I multiply a binomial times a binomial, what method do I use? Yeah, the FOIL method. And what does F stand for in the FOIL method? Yeah, so let's multiply first times first. What's the first term? R times R. And what does the O stand for in FOIL? Outers. What are my outer terms here? R times 2. And what does the I stand for? What are the inner terms here? Negative three and R. And what does the L stand for? Yeah, and what are my last terms? Uh -huh. Exactly. Now let's multiply those out. So what's r times r? r squared. What's r times 2? Two? 2r. Two what's negative 3 times r? Negative 3r. And what's negative 3 times 2? Negative 6. Where are my like terms in here? 2r and negative 3r. What is that combined? What is 2r plus negative 3r? Mm -hmm. Just negative 1r. Or just negative r. Okay, so if I add those all up, I'll get my answer. So that's r squared minus r minus 6. And let's just look at this really quick from this kind of standpoint, from a factoring standpoint. So what are my invisible exponents on the r squared and the r? What are my invisible exponents, or exponents, coefficients? What is the invisible number before the r squared and before the r? Yeah, just one. Right, okay. So. If I were to factor this, if I were to factor it, first I identify what A, B, and C are. So what is A? Yeah, just one. What is B? Good, negative one. And what is C? Negative six. 
Okay, so I identified A, B, and C. Now, what are my factors of C? What two numbers multiplied together give me six? And you can look at your chart if you don't know. Mm -hmm. Three times two and one times six. Okay. These are my two factor pairs. I identified the factors. Now, which of these factor pairs can be added or subtracted together to get to negative 1? How can I get to negative 1 using either 3 and 2 or 1 and 6? Yeah, 2, two minus 3 equals negative 1. So then see how? I have a positive 2, positive 2, and a negative 3, negative 3. Okay, are we starting to see that connection? Sort of, sort of, kind of. All right, let's go on. We're going to do another example, and this time we're just going to factor it. So we want to come up with two binomials multiplied together. That will give us this. That will give us a squared minus 2a minus a b. So first thing we need to do is figure out what is a, what is b, and what is c. a is 1, right? There's an invisible 1 right there. Good. Okay. So let's come up with the factors of 80. Factors of 80. Uh -huh. So 2 times 40. What else? Huh? 10 times 8. 1 times 80. Did I give you guys this one or is it on the on the factor page? Mm -hmm. I did? Did I give you the answers for it or did you guys have to come up with it? Huh? Yeah, 5 times 16. I think there's more, at least one more. Good, 4 times 20. And I think that's it. That's it. Okay, so there's quite a few, right? And now what we need to do is we need to look at these different pairs. And what pair can be added or subtracted together to get us to negative 2? So look at these numbers. Is there any way we can add or subtract them together to get to negative 2? Negative 10 plus 8, exactly, equals negative 2. And maybe you were thinking 8 minus 10. That's also true. However, still, in both cases, the 8 is positive, the 10 is negative. So now I'm going to set up. I'm going to set up my two binomials. And again, I have negative 10 to minus 10. And I have a positive 8. So plus 8. And then what do I put here? A. There you go. A. I just put the variable. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So we have two more options. I can keep going through these last two examples and then give you the rest of class to work. Or do you want to practice doing this type of problem for 10 minutes and then we'll come back together? 
So do you want to practice now or practice in 10 minutes? Now? Okay. So let's take until 1040 and work on numbers one through four. And on that last packet. Yeah. Work on numbers one through four. When problems have a leading coefficient that is not equal to 1, so when A does not equal 1. So this adds a little, it's like just like the next level of the puzzle. It's just a little bit more. So we have to first still identify what is A, what is B, what is C, because that kind of helps us break it all down. And then we need to look at the factors of both A and C, to look at the factors of both. And then look at which factor pairs can be added or subtracted together again to get to B. But now we're not just looking at one pair of numbers, so two numbers. We're going to be looking at two pairs of numbers. So that's four numbers total that we're looking that we have to combine together to get to, to get to B. So first, let's multiply a binomial times a binomial and just kind of activate some prior knowledge. So I'm going to do my FOIL method, right? And I do my first times first. What's my first times first in this example? Mm -hmm. And then what's my outers? What are my outers? Good. 2x times negative 1. What are my inners? Yeah, negative 3 times 3x. And what's my last times last? Good. And we'll multiply it out. First times first is 6 what? Good. 6x squared. What are my outers? Good. Negative 2x. What are my inners? Negative 9x. And what is my last times last? 3. Three. Where are my common, or my, where are my like terms? Negative 2x, negative 9x. What's negative 2x plus negative 9x? Yeah, negative 11x. So this binomial times a binomial turns out to be 6x squared minus 11x plus 3. All right. Just stick with me on this, all right? We're going to look at this example. We're going to go from this back into this. So we've got 9x squared plus 27x plus 8. First identify what is A, what is B, and what is C. So what's my A? Good. What's my B? 27. And what is my C? 8. Okay, now I need to come up with the factors of A and C. So what are my factors of 9? Pardon? Yeah, 3 times 3 and 9 times 1. And then what about 8? Four times two and eight times one. Okay. So now I need to look at one of these two pairs and one of these two pairs. And I'm going to multiply them together 
and then add or subtract them to get to, our goal is to get to 27. Okay, so I'm going to take, let's look at, let's look at 9 and 1 first from over here. So if I did 9 times 4, 9 times 4, can you see that? Not really. Let's see. I really don't want to make this more complicated than it is because I think you guys will get it. But So if I take 9 and 1, if I look at these, if I do 9 times 4, what do I get? 36. So I'm going to take 1 from here and multiply it by 1 from here. Okay, so 9 times 4 is 36. And then what's 1 times 2? Two? 2. Can I combine 36 and 2 and get to 27? Is there any possible way to do that? No. What if I did 9 times 2 and 1 times 4? What's 9 times 2? And what's 1 times 4? 4. four. Can I combine 18 and 4 to get to 27? No. Okay. So those pairs aren't going to work. Now let's try, let's try 3 and 3 and 4 and 2. 3 and 3 and 4 and 2. So I'm going to take 3 and multiply it by 4. What's 3 times 4? 12. And what's 3 times 2? 6. Can I combine 12 and 6 together to get to 27? No. No. And if I just switch them around, it wouldn't change anything, right? I had four different options because I could do 9 and 4 or 9 and 2 and then 1 and 4 and 1 and 2. But 3 and 3 are the same number, so that's not going to change anything. Let's try 3 and 3. And 8 and 1. 3 and 3 and 8 and 1. So what's 3 times 8? 24. And what's 3 times 1? 3. Can I combine 24 and 3 to get to 27? Yeah, how? Just add them. 24 plus 23. Okay, so this is my, this is my winner. So I'm going to use these two factor pairs to build two binomials, right? So first put in your parentheses, right? Okay. And so I want my first times first to equal 9x squared. See that? My first times first always equals that leading term, that first term with the x squared, with the variable squared. So I want my first times first to equal 9x squared. So I'm going to put in 3x and 3x. Yes? 3x and 3x. And now my 8 and my 1. I'm going to go like that, plus, plus. And in this example, it doesn't matter which order you go in. In other cases, it will. For this one, again, let's foil it out to check our work. So if I have first times first, I get 9x squared. If I have outer times outer, I get 3x. And if I have inner and inner, I have 24x, so 3x plus 24x is 27x, and then 8 times 1, last times last, is just 8. Okay. Right, so you see how this is just kind of like the next level up on this little puzzle we're doing? we got to just kind of combine these different numbers together in order to get to what we want to. So... Flip back to that other page and...